I caught Governor Inslee breaking the law once again, and this time he's not alone. Wait until you see what he did this time. Thank you for watching. My name is Glenn Morgan, and this is We the Governed. If you want to learn more about what I'm about ready to describe, I have lots of links down below. I just want to let you know about that because there's a lot of detail to go over here. And again, as I mentioned in the beginning, I caught Governor Inslee breaking the law. And as anybody who's paid attention to my channel or this governor knows, he always seems to like to break the law, and he is actually planning to break the law again this Friday. I don't usually get the opportunity to predict that an elected official is going to break the law on a certain date and time, but in federal way on Friday, he's planning to break the law, and uh, this is in uh, the last week in October here, so it's just worth letting you know that uh, Inslee's planning to do it, and I'll describe what that issue is and exactly what's happening. Now, anybody who knows my channel and has paid attention to my website, and basically anybody else who's been paying attention to this governor knows, Inslee breaks the law all the time. And so uh, that law breaking and the fact that he's almost never held accountable for any of his law breaking is always a source of frustration for anybody who's paying attention to it. And now sometimes people don't like to get into the minutia and get dirty digging into the problems and corruption when in government, but I think it's important that we do it and I think it's important that we talk about it. There's no benefit, in my opinion, to sit back and hide and pretend like something else is going on. So the question is what's new about this particular violation and what am I talking about? And this really goes back to some activities that Governor Inslee has been putting on with his press conferences, where he's misusing public resources to pretend like he's doing press conferences, and they're actually turning into full-blown, open partisan uh, campaign appearances and uh, coordinated with the Democrat Party's talking points and promotion of other people's political campaigns. And why this is illegal is because he is using taxpayer dollars to do this. It's been illegal for a long time. It is a significant violation and it's not a minor thing. It's actually a pretty significant deal. So uh, let's talk very specifically about what I actually did. I filed on the October 24th, here's the first page of it, it's actually an eight-page document here, uh, that outlines the specific violations and the violations that Inslee actually committed in this case uh, in breaking the law. And if you'll notice here, and actually I'm going to link to this down below, but uh, you can read about it, I've had to detail multiple different ethics boards, which I'll explain why I did that. And the reason why it's eight pages long is in order to have an effective complaint, you need to outline what the violation is. Uh, you need to really be specific about the legal uh, uh, violations that were committed, provide evidence, et cetera, et cetera. So I've done a lot of PDC complaints, a lot of other types of ethics complaints in the past. It's not my first one, but it's just worth mentioning that uh, I've linked it down below and, and you might be interested in seeing it. So uh, when we actually go to the specific uh, situations, there's two events that I detailed in this complaint, and they're both relevant to the violation that I found. And if he had just done one of these, it would still be significant. And I believe there's more than just these two, and looks like there might even be a third coming up on Friday. But the first one was a press conference, you know, quote unquote press conference, which was really the campaign event in Olympia on June 25th, 2022, with kind of the Capitol as a background and backdrop for it. And it really had to do with uh, trying to set the agenda and campaign messaging all throughout Washington State for the Democratic Party at this press conference openly uh, talking about booting out Republicans and voting in Democrats before the primary elections in August. This was really designed as a way to kind of launch that campaign. You can watch for it yourself. It's on TVW. I've linked that down below. It's an open partisan uh, sort of uh, event that he organized after a Supreme Court decision uh, just, just a few days before that. Now, the second one, more recently, uh, what came uh, about in Bellingham on the Western Washington University campus, again, another fake press conference that was really a political campaign event on October 21st, uh, 2022. So these are just the two that I outlined in the complaint itself, and I think it's important that I did that. You've got to have be very specific, and these are publicly recorded events, so it's easy to go back and look at the violations. The violations that he specifically broke here, and the other legislators who were with him broke, it's actually RCW 4252180, use of public resources for political campaigns, or I should say misuse of public resources for political campaigns, because that's what he what he did, is he misused and used public resources to facilitate a partisan political activity and event. 
And keep in mind, he could do this if he wanted to on his own time or on somebody else's dime. Instead, he's using your taxpayer dollars and spending them uh, on political partisan efforts like this. The other thing worth looking at is a WAC, which is an administrative code, uh, 292-110-010, and that's a use of state resources or a misuse of state resources. He explicitly broke several of the, the laws in there, and I detailed that in my complaint. Now, the one thing to remember, Inslee, in theory, is an attorney. At least he pretends that he was at some point in time. He claims to have a law degree from a law firm and that he did practice as a slip and fall attorney in eastern Washington for some period of time. So in theory, you'd think a guy who went to law school and, and is and supposed to be somewhat familiar with the law, that he knows very well that he's breaking the law. This is not an ignorance kind of situation. In fact, it's just like the uh, PDC complaint that I had filed against him where he was sanctioned earlier this year for attempting to to conceal all of his uh, financial affairs with out-of-state corporations. And uh, that's another example of him just willfully breaking the law and uh, doing it anyway. And so it's important to remember that this guy, he is an attorney, supposedly, and he should know better than, than just to go out and break the law. But if you are going to break the law, you might as well do it in a group because it's a lot more fun when everybody's in it together, after all. And so Inslee wasn't the only one breaking the law at these events. And based on his efforts, actually, he brought a few other people along to join in the fun and the law breaking. And, uh, you know, I'll argue that to some extent he was the puppet master for the actual event itself. And uh, he really impacted quite a few legislators. And, and state senators. I've actually identified 11 in the complaint. And let's talk about some of these state senators who Inslee brought to these events and helped help them break the law as well. One of them is Senator Monka Dingra, who's out of the 45th Ledge District, east side, kind of a, a Bellevue, Redmond kind of area. And she also claims to be an attorney, and uh, she should know better as well. But uh, Inslee decided to bring her along, and she broke the law. Another uh, a senator was Emily Randall, who's actually in the 26th Ledge District, kind of across the, the river, uh, or I'm sorry, across the Puget Sound and more of the uh, Gig Harbor area. Emily Randall uh, is in a very contested race the cycle. So um, why Inslee decided to bring her along, it's more to promote her campaign than anything else. That's unfortunate for her, but that seems to be the way Inslee was rolling here. You have Senator June Robinson, who is out of the 38th up by Everett. Um, she is also somebody that Inslee decided to bring to these events and, and help uh, violate the law. And then you had Senator Liz Lovelett as well. So these are just the four senators that Inslee decided to bring and help break the law with him. And of course, they weren't alone because, again, it's always more fun when you have a lot of people there to break the law with you. And Inslee decided to also throw in about seven legislators who also broke the law. Now, there's a variety of them here. I'm not going to get into too much detail on each of these guys. Some of them are frequent flyers when it comes to campaign finance violations, and uh, others are uh, relatively um, unscathed by PDC complaints, but uh, but they're still involved in breaking the law in this case. You have legislators, uh, both legislators from the 40th district, which is kind of San Juan County, Bellingham. You have both legislators who are in the 42nd Ledge District, which is North Whatcom County. You have Jessica Bateman from the 22nd Ledge District in Olympia. You had a number of these legislators, and they all decided to break the law along with Inslee and along with those state senators. So they're all in this together, and yes, they are. Uh, they've all decided to jump in together, break those laws, and uh, probably figuring that they can get away with it. And, uh, you know, to some extent, Inslee's the one who initiated most of the law breaking here and most of the misuse of state resources, but the rest of them decided to jump right in, and nobody shied away from the openly partisan nature of these uh, press conferences and the fact that they really just turned into a big uh, political campaign for the Democratic Party and their talking points and their candidates. Again, I've outlined it very clearly in that complaint. Now, in theory, the lawbreaking really has to do with state ethics laws. And state ethics laws are more than just telling the politicians that they can't accept bribes or uh, do kickback schemes with their friends, or at least if they're going to do that, uh, doing it uh, in a way that actually follows the law. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of, if you've ever looked into these grant grifting operations or contract uh, programs or anything else, um, there's a lot of things that should be illegal and they're clearly immoral, but they are they are considered ethical. And uh, when it comes to this kind of stuff, though, when you're trying to catch them, uh, when, they, when they're breaking ethics laws, 
it's, there's, a, there's a number of different areas. Really, I'm just talking about misuse of state resources in this case. And there's actually two entities set up at the state level that manage it. One of them is the uh, Legislative Ethics Board, which I've uh, provided kind of a, uh, just a screen capture of what their front page looks like, and I'll link to them down below. There's really not a lot here, but this is the entity that uh, supervises the ethics laws and it's a plac- uh, how they apply them to the, and the investigations involving those issues, and how they apply them to the state Senate and also to the state House uh, of Representatives. So the legislature is uh, really managed by this group right here. And um, usually they make the news sometimes when they're enforcing maybe a ridiculous rule around Facebook posts. That seems to be what they like to spend most of their energy on. And there's been some drama in the past, and I've written about a few of these uh, cases, uh, one in particular that was uh, the Melanie Sandbach case that was just absurd and out of control. Nevertheless, I filed my own complaints in the past, and I have had uh, people like Senator Mona Doss was fined $500 um, uh, based basically a couple years ago now for violations that she committed and really open and obvious violations of the state ethics laws. So the Legislative Ethics uh, Board will enforce those laws on occasion with some of their elected officials, even Democrats, uh, like this one here. So um, I think it does attempt to try to make a uh, partisanly neutral effort in that process. It does give a lot of um, benefit of the doubt to the elected officials, so you have to fairly have a fairly high bar to prove that they've broken the law, but it is uh, the main entity that, that uh, deals with those issues. I'm less familiar with the Executive Ethics uh, Board, and uh, uh, there's a whole website linked to it. Mostly, they tend to be focused on anything in the executive branch of government, which means the governor, uh, the appointees in the various state agencies, uh, higher level employees there usually. And most of the complaints, when you actually look at it, they're structured for whistleblower complaints, uh, really more focused on open violations, usually below the governor's office. Um, this is an unusual one that I filed against the governor himself and some of his staffers that'd be involved in it because. Uh, um, I don't think they get too many complaints that actually deal with the governor themselves. And part of the reason is that the state, the executive ethics board, is really run out of the AG's office. When I hand-delivered the complaints, I had to go over to the AG's office and deliver it directly to, um, to, to one, of the AG, one of the AG employees, the attorney general's employees over there. And uh, they're the ones who staff and research and investigate any of the violations. And if you know the relationship between Bob Ferguson and Jay Inslee, it's pretty close. They basically cover each other's back. I don't know if they're as close as uh, you know Silent J and, and and Bob here represented in the image, but they're about that close. They're not going to ever. I've never seen the AG actually do anything to enforce the law when it comes to addressing violations committed by the governor's office. So will they do it this time? Will there be something different? I, we'll have to find out. One other thing I need to point out is that all the board members on the executive ethics board are appointed by the governor. So it's not like um, they're at arm's length. I mean, they are uh, pretty incestuous here, and that's just the way they roll in Olympia. So the question then always comes about, well, so what, Glenn? These guys broke the law. They break the law frequently. What are the penalties that they actually could be facing? And that's a great question to ask. And especially on the executive ethics side, usually in the alleged ethics side, there's a fine that they could get. It may seem like small potatoes, but nevertheless, they could be fines. And uh, so it may also just be a naughty, naughty letter that they get or a formal sanction. Those are like the formal warnings that I uh, get issued all the time by the Public Disclosure Commission to the legislators and the judges and others that break the law. So maybe it's a naughty, naughty letter that they get. Or it could be that they're told to take a little bit of a time out and stand in the corner, uh, or whatever the equivalent would be for an elected official who's broken the law. However, no matter what, I guarantee that anybody who's, uh, any, that whole cast of characters that I've already identified there, they're all going to be denying that they broke the law, and they're all going to be pretending that somehow the state resources weren't misused, and somehow, despite the video evidence to the contrary, that this wasn't an openly partisan effort on their part and organized by Inslee and the governor's office to do this. So I know a lot of people then will get frustrated because the politicians lie, the boards that are supposed to enforce the law don't seem to be doing a very good job. The insiders have it rigged for themselves and to their own best interests. And so little people like us that catch them breaking the law, they may throw the gavel at us and, you know, fine us hundreds of thousands of dollars for imaginary violations of some obscure law. But when it comes to enforcing the law on themselves, they don't tend to enforce it very well. And there's a lot of truth in that critique, and I'd share in that critique most of the time. However, 
That doesn't mean that we should just sit back and give up or sit back and not shine the spotlight. And I think shine the spotlight on these guys is actually a really important thing to do because it's important to identify when they and call them out when they're breaking the law like this. And whether the media decides to help uh, collude with them and cover up, as the media has been uh, typically doing more often than not lately, uh, it doesn't mean that we can't still do this and expose it ourselves, share it widely, tell the truth about what's actually going on out there. There's nothing to hide, and we might as well get out and do it. I think it's important, and it's an important thing for activists to know how to do. Feel free, if you think you've found Inslee breaking other laws like this, or anybody else in government for that matter, if you want to use my, my complaint that I've linked to down below as a template, go ahead. Uh, it's, uh, it's not like it's proprietary information, and it is a public record. I've uh, filed it with, uh, with the agencies. It's very public as well. You'll notice, by the way, when you look at that, I did link in a, a public records request uh, because I am requesting a little, lot more information uh, from all of these people, and I anticipate that'll be a trove of interesting information that they'll probably flood a lot of crap in there as well. Well, but there'll be some good stuff in there that I can pull out and uh, it'll help further reinforce the fact that these violations uh, were committed by this uh, cast of characters this time around. And again, none of this happens unless you're willing to shine a spotlight on it and willing to stand up and confront uh, the people that uh, want to be uh, in charge of everything in our state. If you don't confront them or at least expose them a little bit, they just keep getting worse and worse over time. So I think it's worth pushing back. Because again, as I have said before, uh, the future belongs to those who show up and you need to show up to make a difference. If you wanna learn more, link down below, go to my website, don't forget to subscribe and please feel free to share this with others. Thank you so much for watching.